everyone, my name is Ksenia and today my guest here is the best thing in wrestling, Sulfur Cream, <laughs> Anthony Green. Already knowing the new moniker, of look course. at that. We do our homework on this Jeez, channel. Uh, all right. <laughs> How are you? I'm so good, how are you? I am absolutely wonderful. Um, as you can see, it's beautiful here in the Orlando. Sun's <laughs> Great day, we had a couple days of really cold weather, like oh, yeah. 50 degrees. Eesh. Which is super cold for Florida. <laughs> it, it really is, and now we, we got like 80 degrees today, high 70s, beautiful out. Yeah, and I pack like it was still in the 50s. So <laughs> we're gonna have some warm days ahead. <laughs> As always, we're gonna just jump right in and start torturing you with uh, unpleasant questions because that's what we're here for. <laughs> and that's uh, what yeah. we gathered here yeah. for. You had your NXT run quite recently. Yes. And then you appeared in AW, which you um, made the list of those few wrestlers who have been featured in both companies yeah. at this point. Uh, so, about the NXT thing, it's been very controversial topic on the whole with the releases that we had yeah. last last year and this year. I want to start with like a simple question, but simple but not easy probably. Was your NXT run ultimately a good thing for your career? Um, I like to call it a WWE Performance Center 205 Live run, I yeah, guess. I didn't really sure. have many TV opportunities in NXT, but I think it was great for me. They hired me at a time where there were no jobs or really any wrestling at all. They hired me mid pandemic. Yeah. So I thought that was very helpful. And then being married to like Tony Nice and Aria Davari and wrestling them yeah. basically every single week, uh, I thought was a great learning experience for me since they were on the main roster, like learning under Vince McMahon, traveling the road. Tony Nese won the Cruiserweight title at WrestleMania in 2019. Um, so working under them I thought was very useful. And I truly don't believe I would have had any opportunities with AEW or even be able to like make mm. a full-time living in wrestling now in the indies if it wasn't for what I did there, even if it was like a short period of time. Yeah, and you already kind of mentioned it a little bit. The entirety of your WWE run was throughout the pandemic, right? Yeah. Do you feel like that influenced your experience at all? Um. A little bit, because I heard so many stories about what it used to be like, and they did sh like house shows called like Coconut Loops in Florida, and then they would be on I the road. I can imagine like get, get into environment and everyone being like, "Oh, it's not like it used to be." Yeah, that's exactly how it was <laughs> you too. Never know what yeah, that was. and then towards the very end of me being there, it slowly like like the training schedule got a little more normal, but it wasn't like what it used to be from what I was told. So I never got the full experience. So if I had like one regret. It was not being hired like a year yeah. before or even I guess being hired now when there it's like full blown normalcy of training and everything. Yeah. But also talking about being hired now, I was going to ask this question later in the interview, but I'm uh, gonna ask it now. Yeah. Uh, are you keeping up with the new rebranded NXT and what are your thoughts on it? Um so yes and no. Sorry, I'm gonna fix my my knots up here. Oh, um so yes and no. I have a lot of friends that still work there and I support all of them. It is tough for me to watch live because we don't have cable in my household, <laughs> but um, I do watch on. Yeah, I do watch on Hulu. That's a choice to not have cable. Uh, I do watch on Hulu though. It's like I think a week or two off, and then I always watch wrestling via Twitter. So I always like to see yeah. what uh, Indy Hartwell, Persia Perota, uh, oh. Grayson Waller, um, Carmelo Hayes. I love to see what all those people are doing because those are all people I trained with while I was there. Ika Mangiro. He's wrestled Grayson Waller, right? Here's my here's my last match. Yeah. Yeah. He, en he ended the streak for me. Yeah. <laughs> it's his fault. <laughs> blame Grayson Waller. No, 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 no. <laughs> Do not blame him. No. Do you feel like the rebrand was a positive thing for NXT ultimately? I think for what they're doing, yes. They want more larger than life characters. They want, uh, I guess, larger wrestlers so if that's what if, if that's what the the company wants then i do think it was the right move um and then like i said it's just left so many of us independent wrestlers that got released during it and even some of the i guess the bigger stars that got released on the main roster as well at the same time yeah. it's just giving us more opportunities now in the independence and then with companies like AEW, MLW, Impact, NWA there's just so much on the horizon for all of us now with all the releases 
pretty much almost all the people that you wrestled in WWE, except for Grayson Waller, <laughs> are gone. Ayer Devari, Tony Nese are oh all boy. outside of the company. And you kind of were in this like wave of releases too. Mm -hmm. So can you maybe like tell us a little bit about that? How, how, how did it feel? Did you expect it? Did you expect the call? How did that happen? Oh no, so I, <laughs> I actually posted about it when it happened and I went to work that day. Uh, did my full training in ring, did gym, and I got the call. And like, oh, I got the call two hours later after everything. Like, it was a Friday afternoon. I like, yeah. had no, no thought in the world that it was going to happen. So it was a bit of a shock, yeah. uh, but at the same time seeing, I guess, the direction they were going in. I can't even say... I, I didn't see it coming, but I guess now it makes, like, the way that they laid the pieces down, it makes more sense now. Yeah. But then I was like, well, this is, this is insanity. <laughs> how, how could this have happened? It's so interesting that you say this because I also interviewed the person who is responsible for this interview, who tagged you on oh. my Twitter, Alex Zane, yeah. who, whom I love very much. I think he's great. Because when I asked him about his release, he said that to him it was like almost mundane, like it was almost expected. He was like, yeah. Really? And it's so funny because you guys were like in the same wave of releases, I guess you could say, in around the same time. Yeah, I was, was June, different... he was August, yeah. And it was such a different experience for... Yeah, for both of us, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it depends on the person, I guess. We can't really label WWE as this one experience for everyone. So you appeared on uh, AW Dark quite recently. A couple times, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a couple times. And one thing that I find really strange in a good way about it is that we're in Orlando right now and they're taping AW Dark at Universal in Orlando and it's pretty much the same people that come to NXT tapings. And <laughs> I feel like that's part of the reason why you, you were received very like yeah, very well, nicely, yeah. very warm reception. And do you feel like that was part of the reason why it worked out like because you, you did have a longer match on a on aw it wasn't yep. a squash like a lot of things happen yeah. on dark which is also perfectly fine but you had a little more time to shine do you feel like that audience being familiar with you was part of the reason and do you personally feel like you can capitalize on that or do you just not give it much thought um so i don't really think much about the crowd i can tell you straight up that tony khan said he followed my work both in 205 okay. Live, like, and then he watches independent wrestling yeah. religiously. The guy doesn't stop watching wrestling, including his own show. I don't know how he has the time to do it. Um, but he was a fan of my work beforehand. Yeah. So I think that played a little bit of a role of the opportunities I was given, but I'm sure it only helps that their crowd also like gave me like a positive reception when I came out. Yeah, and when, when you appeared, um, I can't remember whether it was the first time or the second time, but I was in the audience. And I know that some people who were NXT regulars or even like, you know, yelling out stuff, someone started chanting like, we were NXT and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, so I feel like there's a certain degree of familiarity, even though the peop people like to pose it as though there's a rivalry, you know, yeah. between NXT and AW. But in the end of the day, same people at the tapings. Yeah. So do you yourself feel like people, your fans or promoters kind of try to like almost make you like antagonize NXT and, and make you like appear as one of those people who are like oh like I'm free of the shackles of WWE. See, no I don't think so I think a lot of promoters particularly like to promote it like yeah. on a lot of posters I'll see former NXT or former yeah. 205 Live star so I don't think anyone's like telling me or making me feel like I have to be against it and i'm not i'm really not yeah um, I, mean, I, I can tell that you're not you're, you've been very nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> but no and even fans usually if they ask me at a show like at a merch table or anything it's usually yeah. how was your experience yeah. what did you like this that and the other it's never like so they really screwed you over, huh? It's never, it's never like that. <laughs> it's, it's a good thing. It's not like that. But do you feel like you almost want to like keep the door open? Oh, hundred percent. Like, so if if they were to call you right now and be like, "Hey, come back," the the, the, the never say never mentality in wrestling is like the truest thing. You've heard of yeah. wrestlers get screwed over by wrestling organizations, and they always end up coming back. And I'm one. Uh, you meet the same people going up that you do going down. So I never want to burn a bridge with somebody yeah. or talk ill of somebody else because I never know when I'm going to have to beg them for a job again, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that, that's anywhere, yeah. uh, not just WWE in particular, but. And there's been quite a discourse recently about is WWE still the goal? Is WWE still the golden standard? Is it still like the ultimate 
goal for a wrestler and especially it's interesting to ask people like you who have had like a very brief run and then got released so do you feel like for you WWE is still the the company to strive to be in um I mean I think you can't not put AEW in the conversation at this yeah, point absolutely. yeah like but, especially by all means please do <laughs> uh, rating ratings wars and money being made and the talent they have and the, the crowds that they're drawing there's no doubt that they are legitimate competition at this point. Yeah. So I think, I wouldn't say it's A and B, it's probably A and A1, and like they're complete yeah. equals at this point for a wrestler trying to make it in pro wrestling. Um, for me in particular, uh, the goal is, I've always wanted to go to WWE, mm -hmm. like as a kid, yeah, um, sure. and I got to do that. I've always wanted to go to Japan. That's something I haven't done, that I dreamed to do. Um, with whom, it doesn't matter if it's uh, like a new Japan, all Japan's running again, uh, NOAA, like there's so many options. It doesn't matter what in particular. And lastly, just to continue to make a living in wrestling, if that means sign a major contract with another company or just do this independently and really hustle to make it work. But that's, for me personally, that's the goal. I think for everyone else, I think WWE is still always going to be like, the big one, but yeah, there's no sure. doubt that AEW is up okay. there right next yeah. to them. Yeah, totally. You've been very nice to everyone, but ultimately, if you were to compare the backstage, I guess, culture of NXT versus AEW, what's the defining difference? Or is there a defining difference? Um, so it's really tough to say because working at both or working for both, like I had friends from the independents and then there was also people that I weren't familiar with. Um, no one is mean if that means anything. That's good. Um, <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> I think the biggest difference was the higher ups at AEW may have been a bit easier to reach. To reach. Yeah. Um, in like. It seems to be the like in, 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 in like a quick moment, like oh, I need to talk to somebody. Yeah. It was easier to do it. Um, though I will say, if you had like a producer at NXT they would always make sure that your question got answered yeah. one way or another. So it's tough to say, like both locker rooms were positive. Like, no, like I said, no one's rude. Yeah. Um, <laughs> both are also chaotic <laughs> at the same time. Like th things can change and yeah, things can change in a, in a minute, but yeah. really, yeah, yeah, no, both are, both are neat. I'm That's sorry. Good. Sorry. I'm a, I'm a boring interview. No, I'm not giving you the stuff you want to hear. That's good. Um, and for both, AW and NXT, the audience is relatively young, and as I said, again, very similar audience. And again, they love you. However, your gimmick is very like 80s inspired. Mm -hmm. Am I correct to yeah, say yeah, that? Yeah. Um, and uh, why why do you feel it clicks with the younger audience, and how do you achieve that? <laughs> so I think uh, nostalgia is really big right now, and like almost in like a, a cool hipster type way oh, yeah. just like fanny packs are in again oh, yeah. <laughs> um like zoo, people wear zubas again so i think it's Which just like a cool culture well. yeah yeah like a very like uh, a retro throwback i think is just very yeah. popular like not, you always hear about like 90s night pub crawls or yeah. uh, 80s night at the nightclub or whatever so i think all of that together uh fits my aesthetic. I like to say I'm a I'm a new school wrestler with an old school feel. Yeah. And I think people get to like, oh, he comes out to Belinda Carlisle. Heaven is a place on earth. Oh, this, that, and the other. And I think it all just kind of encapsulates. Is that the word I'm looking for? En I, I think encapsulates. And yeah. <laughs> and yes, thank you, producer. Um, <laughs> uh, what what my character? <laughs> <laughs> what my character is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I almost feel like it's like, it's not like, oh, I was alive in the 80s and I miss it. It's more like, oh, it's cool in, in the... Like, yes, exactly. Yeah. Like. It's what's cool now. Yeah, I guess that's what works. This is more of like a fun, non-planned question, but you mentioned it off camera before this, that uh, apparently we share uh, somewhat Russian descent. Yes. <laughs> which is very interesting. There are two uh, somewhat Russians in the frame right now. Yeah. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so I am 50% Russian. See, that's a high percentage. Yeah, my... I, I'm not sure I'm 50% oh. Russian. <laughs> Yeah, so my mom was born in Moscow, Russia. Well, that's where I was born. <laughs> and then lived in Tehran, Iran. And uh, her family was actually the last family to come to the United States to Ellis Island in New York on the Queen Mary too. Uh, she was very young, like I said, four or five years old. And then uh, later moved to Massachusetts, got older, met my dad, stuff, okay. and then here I am. Are you in any way in touch with your Russian heritage? Um. 
No, not even a little, a little bit. No, oh my, my so my mom only spoke Russian when she was very, very young. Yeah. And when she moved to America, she was made fun of for it. So she stopped speaking it and stopped oh, learning Russian. <laughs> Uh, this is millions of years ago. Yeah. Um, stopped learning Russian. She she couldn't tell you anything at this point. So. Would you like to learn a Russian word or phrase right now? Yes. Which one? Not a bad one. A good one. He hello. How do you say hello? Привет. One more time. Привет. 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 So good. It's the tongue. You gotta roll the tongue. Yeah. Okay. It's like an informal hello. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. It's like a hey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, that's that's it. That's the most basic one. Um, and how do you say goodbye? Okay, the the informal one or the formal one, because the formal one's gonna be longer. Oh, so okay. Harder to say. Do you want to do the? Okay, so the informal one is paka. Very pa easy. Paka. Paka. Okay, we'll use that later. Mm -hmm. I gotta remember it. Okay. And the formal one is the svidanie. Paka. Paka. <laughs> Yeah, we're just we're just subtle with this. Maybe you could say like subscribe or something since we're on camera and we're doing this. Can you say so uh subscribe to this channel would be подписывайтесь на этот канал. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's just let's start for one подписывайтесь. Подписывайтесь. Can you say that? Подписывайтесь. 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 All right, Good. not bad. We Great. can just clip each one together. <laughs> Now that I've tortured you enough, you can plug your stuff, your merch, your social media. I would love to. So I am on Instagram at the alternative AG, Twitter at alternative underscore AG. That's so nice. So, Again, so nice. And all the links will be in the description. And thank you so much for doing this. No, of course. For learning thank Russian. You. For, for having this brief uh, lesson of Russian language with uh, me. Pick up. Yeah, and thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> Give this video a like if you've had a good time. Subscribe, tap the notification bell to never miss an upload. And until next time, пока! <laughs> also, like, again, you're being very nice to, to everyone right now, but ultimately... Want me to be what? mean? Want me to be mean to someone? I always <laughs> want people to be it's, it's funny because... No, okay, you, you brought it up. So, uh, if you want to be... <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Friend, Sean Rostov, who sometimes in interviews asks people who uh, asks people to bury someone. Okay. Would you like to bury someone? Yeah, I'd okay. love to bury someone. Ava. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Yells at me when I don't take the trash out. Oh no. Yells at me because I don't do laundry. You know what? You stink. <laughs> okay, that was very. very Is that good enough? You could yeah, you can clip that. Like, yeah. That could be its we'll own just video. Put just that in. <laughs> in the final cut. <laughs>